Whenever I smell asphalt, I think of Marine. That's the last sensation I had before I blacked out. The thick smell of asphalt. And the first thing I saw when I woke up was her face. She said she'd fix my bike. Free. No strings attached. I should have known then that things are never that simple. Yeah. When I think of Marine, I think of two things. Asphalt and trouble. Rip Burger, you're dumber than dirt. Oh, Mr. Corley, if you'd only listen to my plan, my vision. I know your plan, Rip Burger. You're waiting for me to die so you can take over my company. Oh, sir, that's horrible. I am not waiting for you to die. You know I've never liked you, Rip. But you have business know-how and killer instincts that I respect. Why, thank you, sir. But this latest idea of yours, riding up to our shareholders' meeting with a gang of bikers? Who do you think you're fooling? The shareholders, sir. It's good PR to be seen hobnobbing with real Corley Motors customers. What do you know about our customers, Adrian? You've never even been on a bike. Well, you know I'd be on one right now, sir, if it weren't for my destabilizing inner ear condition. Ah, your ears are fine. It's what's between them that scares me. Some boys I can ride with. Step on it. Let's find out who they are. Hey, Ben. Mm. You know, Ben, we're broke. Yeah. And if some cash doesn't come our way soon, we're in big trouble. Relax. I have a feeling something's coming our way. Something big. Uh, you better stay out here, Rip. This place is bikers only. <laughs> All right, who's the guy that drove over my car?
possibly be taking so long? Maybe old man Corley got himself in trouble. Yeah, maybe they took the old guy out back and worked him over with a two-by-four. Hmm, an appealing notion, but improbable. More likely he's boring them to death with some tale of the glory days. <laughs> but Malcolm, isn't that illegal? Not back then it wasn't. <laughs> so who do you ride with these days? He rides with me. Although I'm sure he'd much rather be riding with your little club. I told you to wait out in the limo, Rip Burger. I thought you might like some help with your sales pitch, sir. Sales pitch? Yes. We have come here today to offer you and your men employment. Mr. Corley requires an escort to the annual Corley Motors shareholders meeting. Does this look like an escort service to you? You would be well compensated for your time, of course. Not interested. It's uh, fairly obvious that you could use the money. Listen, I said we're not for rent. The Polecats are not goons for hire. Not even if it were Malcolm Corley's dying wish. Rip Burger! That does it! I'm gonna... Hold on there, Malcolm. If you don't mind, I'd like to step outside with Mr. Rip Burger for a little chat. Excellent idea. And the doctor says he only has a few months to live. That's bad news for all of us. He's not just a nice guy. He's also the last motorcycle maker in the country. What happens to Corley Motors if he dies? Don't worry. I have a plan. And if you come to the shareholders meeting with us, you'll find out what it is. No dice, Rip Burger. The Polecats are not thugs for rent. If you want to buy muscle, you should go find the Rotwheelers. The old man says it's the Polecats or nothing. Then I guess it'll have to be nothing. Hmm. And that's your last word? That's it. Well, I'd like to make you just one final offer. <sighs> Bolus, take this coat and go get his motorcycle. We'll have to tie up this little 200-pound loose end. <laughs> It'll need to look like an accident. That stuffed shirt actually thinks I'll leave him in control of Corley Motors when I go. Boy, is he in for a surprise. Hey, where's Ben going? Your colleague has decided to accept our generous offer after all. As a matter of fact, he's gone on ahead to scout out the route. He did? Well then, let's roll him, boys. Yahoo! Corbill, here we come. I, uh, fixed your door. It was sticky. Look, I don't want no trouble. Just leave me out of this mess. You know what might look better on your nose? What? The bar. <clears throat> now don't mess around with me. All right, all right. I got your keys, but I don't know nothing. They had guns. They told me to stall you as long as possible. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I overheard them say something about an ambush up the road. What else? Nothing, nothing. Look, man. Here are your keys, all right? Oh, uh, someone did say something about killing you and making it look like an accident. They didn't do too good of a job there. But why ambush the pole gants? I'd better get moving.
No one can stop me. But they try. Hey! Ain't you the A number one old cat honcho? Yeah, then you're in my way. Well, get used to it, bud. When the rock wheelers hit the road, we own it. Look, I'm serious. Someone's ambushing the pole cats. Someone's ambushing the pole cats? Oh, heavens! Whatever will we do? Ha <laughs> ha! That does it. Come on, kitty! Let's get down! I'd like to make you just something about killing you and making it look like an accident. Something about killing you and making it look like an accident. I have a plan. They had guns! Malcolm Corley's dying wish. Something about an ambush up the road. I have a plan. Man, this is gruesome. My editor better print these in color. Now, I have to get you some help, I suppose. Ah, uh, quit moaning. I know someone around here who can fix anything. What are you? I'm a mechanic. And apparently a pretty good doctor as well. My name's Maureen. My name's Ben. Why did you hit me over the head, Maureen? You were in an accident. A reporter found you and brought you and your bike here. My bike? What have you done with my bike? Brought it back from the dead. Sort of like what I did with you. I need a little help getting it finished, though. Who are you? Maureen, remember? If that's too hard, maybe you should just stick with Mo. Do you have a last name? I prefer not to use it. What about you? Same deal. Then it's Ben and Mo forever, I guess. This an authorized Corley Service Center? Now you could call this a Corley Service Center, but I don't have the official paperwork. Ah, an illegitimate Corley operation. I prefer to think of it as a renegade Corley operation. Where'd you learn bikes? I grew up working on them with my dad. One summer, we did nothing but restore this old hardtail together. I mean, we scrubbed every bolt until it shined. But he took off one day and he never came back. So I switched to toasters. You live in this town? Well, Melonweed's not much of a town. What's left of it is sinking about a foot a year. People either learn to adjust or they leave, which is fine with me. Not a people person? I'm just better with toasters, that's all. You seem more concerned with me than your bike. How's it look? It looks better than it did, but you gotta help me out. The front forks are wasted, so you'll have to get some new ones. And someone stole my welding torch. Can you believe that? I can't finish without one. 
And last but not least, I patched up your ruptured gas tank, but you're out of fuel and I don't have any. I gotta get out of this town, fast. Trouble with the law? Not in this county. Then what's the hurry? My gang's in trouble. Polecats? How'd you know that? They gamble them on the back of your jacket. They're headed for an ambush, so I gotta catch them. We better get this bad boy back on the road then, huh? I don't have any money to pay you with. Hey, this one's free. I haven't touched anything besides a toaster for so long. Getting my hands on your hog has really been a pleasure. Well, thanks. Don't sweat it. Where am I supposed to find all this stuff? You can hack it, tough guy. How am I supposed to find your torch? I don't know. Set up a dragnet. Still can't believe someone would steal my torch. Who around here would do a thing like that? Where's the gas? Well, there's a whole tower full of it at the edge of town. I have this crazy, irrational intuition that tells me maybe it's worth checking out. Where am I going to find new forks? Well, they don't have to be new-new, just not broken into little pieces. You could start by asking Todd in the trailer across the way. He runs the junkyard. Actually, I think I can handle it. Good. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Let me know if you need any aspirin or anything. Oh, good. You're not dead yet. I might still get a quote. I heard you saved my life. Yeah, but don't worry. I wasn't trying to. I was just looking for some nice roadside disaster photos and you helped. Who'd want a picture of me bleeding? It's not the blood. It's the way you were, all twisted up like a pretzel. Listen, I've got to stop an ambush. Ambush? Really? Where? I don't know exactly. My crew is escorting some VIPs to the Corley Motors shareholders meeting, and there's an ambush waiting for them somewhere up the road. Um, uh, I... I... Yeah? This is hard for me. I... I need... Come on, man, spit it out! Could you give me a ride in your car? I've got to stop this ambush. You're right. We have to get to the ambush, all right. But I'm afraid I'm with our wheels at the moment. How did you get us here? Hitched. Well, I'd better be going. All right, drive safe now. Thanks for the lift. Now I got a quote for you. out there. Hey, I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy. I don't got time to waste on bums like you. I'm not putting my lips on that. That's my welding torch. How'd you get it? Oh, it was just lying around. A pair of forks, a little gas, and we're set.
I don't see anybody. Maybe nobody's there. Well, who set off the alarm, Floyd? Maybe somebody's just fooling with us. Ah, uh, you must have missed that last guy. Well, if you could hold this thing still while I'm shooting. I'm going down for a closer look. I don't see nobody. He must have run away. Nah, we would have seen him running from the air. He must be hiding up in the tower. We got him treed. Let's go up and get him. Hey, who's that down there in the yard? It's him. Get him. Where? Over there. Quick. You go around the other side and we'll have him cornered. Where'd he go? Let's call it quits, huh, boss? No. Let's call on reinforcements. <clears throat> oh, good. You get this from the gas tower? Not exactly. Just a pair of new forks and we're on the road. junk. Dog jumps in car, eats meat, Jumps out, kills me. Here, poochie pooch. Pooch. Bon appetit, mud.
I'd better get out of here. I'd better get out of here. I'd better get out of here. That's one ill-tempered mongrel. <clears throat> nice forks. Where'd you find them? Right next to the knives and spoons. Well, that's it. Wait outside for a minute and I'll finish her up. I'm working on a surprise. Hey, I've been meaning to ask you, what's this picture of? Oh, that's me and my Uncle Pete. He took care of me after Dad split at this place he called the Mink Ranch. And when he died, he left it to me. You're a mink farmer? Nah, that place went belly up long before he died. But I still go back there whenever I need to get away for a while. Okay, just curious. Now I'm out of here. I hate surprises. All right, here she comes. Am I cool or what? You're amazing. I should crash that thing every day. So what's the surprise? Oh, just your average everyday pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster. You're serious? Yes. But only the vultures. I have my connections. Now, are you gonna try this thing out or not? Ooh, we wish I had a camera. I wish I had some way of paying you back. Just beat it, will ya? You're scaring away my regular customers. Bye, Mo. Send me a postcard from the ambush. back at the gas tower. He's got a lot of nerve, that piece of trash. Let's get him. All units, follow me. Ben, how'd you get behind us? Where are the suits? Corley's making a pit stop. He has a bladder the size of a thimble, man. Ripburger? Haven't seen him in a while. Ben, man, what's the deal? Did you find something up the road? Are we headed for trouble? No. We're in it. Put my head in a basket, cause I'd had a tank full. When she blow my gasket, I surely was thankful. Till I head for the skies up above. It's a woman with wheels that I love. <sighs> Come on, old man. I gotcha. Now, do something incriminating, like ambush somebody. Aha, the plot thickens. <laughs> You shouldn't have laughed at me in those board meetings, Malcolm. Wow. 
you're the psycho. Gotcha. Hey, look what I found in the bushes. What is that? It's a chokehold. Come here and I'll demonstrate. It's got a camera. I'll get her. No. Nestor will take care of her. You have an important engagement with the rest of the Corley family. Right. But don't forget to destroy that camera. Yeah, yeah. Now then, Malcolm. How about one for the road? Corley? Corley? Ben! <coughs> I guess Rip Berger couldn't wait for natural causes. Just like him to hit a man when his flies down. <laughs> Rip Berger did this to you? Yeah, he knew I was dying. And he knew that my will would put him out of a job. He wants to take over Corley Motors, Ben. Sell it off to foreigners. Lay off workers. Start making minivans. You understand me? Minivans! Oh. <coughs> you gotta hurt him for me, Ben. Promise me you'll hurt him bad. I promise. <coughs> I want my daughter to take over the company. You have a daughter? Yeah. And she's a real mechanical genius, Ben. Rebuilt her first carburetor when she was four. Eh, I used to call her the diaper dynamo. <coughs> Find my daughter, Ben. Find Maureen. Maureen? Burger's way ahead of me. I just hope Maureen can handle herself until I get there. Mm. Gun, I understand. Why'd he bring a camera? Who does this guy work for? Corley Motors? Nestor, what's that moving over there by that pile? I don't know, Rip, but I think that pile is Bolus. <sighs> Yes, now I remember. You're the smart one, aren't you? There's Moe's shack, but I don't see the limo. Maybe I beat them here. On second thought, maybe I didn't. Looks like someone searched this place in a hurry. Nothing left but debris, except for that smashed up camera. Back's open. No film inside. Hmm. Mo said she didn't have a camera. Here's Mo's picture of her and her Uncle Pete at his mink ranch. She said she went there whenever she needed to get away for a while. That's pretty much my only lead right now. So much for returning to the scene of the crime. They'll be coming this way soon. I gotta get a plan. Fast. No time to talk. You know, it's stank in there, but I can't remember a better sleep. You gotta help me. Go find my editor in Corville. Tell him I took pictures of the Corley murder. You got pictures? Yeah, but some thug took my camera. So you don't have any pictures? Well, I tracked the guy to Melonweed, but I'm not going near the place. They kill me! Get my editor. He's gotta get me out of this. 
Take one of these fake IDs to get through the roadblocks. My career is riding on those pictures. Help me, Ben. You're my only hope. Oh, don't worry. I owe you one. If Miranda's thug is the same one that trashed Moe's place, that could be Miranda's camera I saw there. But then, who's got the film? Hey, killer. What? Hey, it's cool. Your secret's safe with me. What secret? Haven't you been watching the news? Once again, our top story tonight, Malcolm Corley, owner of Corley Motors, was found dead at a rest stop just outside the town of Melonweed. Apparently, the benevolent patriarch and CEO was viciously beaten about the head and neck, savagely and without mercy. Police have arrested a notorious outlaw biker gang known as the Polecats. No. With the exception of their leader, who is still at large. Roadblocks have been set up along Highway 9 in an effort to apprehend this dangerous and violent criminal. We've been set up. Roadblocks suck. I shouldn't have left the gang there. Hey, I don't want to hear anything about it. You ain't making me an accessory after the fact. Just lay low, man. That's your truck out front. I need a ride. I look like a cabbie to you. Get lost. They're not letting anyone through that roadblock anyway. Not even truckers? They turned me around and said police business only. Pigs. Look, I really need a ride. Not gonna happen. Why? Because you're afraid of some cops? No, because I don't like you. I just killed a guy. I'm just about to. Seem to have a lot of time on your hands. Not to mention nicks and scratches. <laughs> Am I distracting you? Good talking to you. Friendly folks you get in here. Em, it's not what you'd call an I'm okay, you're okay person. Ah, shut your hole, Quohog. Here. What's that? Fake federal investigator ID. Could be of some use at one of those roadblocks. Ever hear of this place? Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch? I remember there used to be some sort of weasel plantation or, or something up the road. Down Highway 9 on the other side of them damn roadblocks. I used to pick up mink meat there real cheap and sell it to school lunch programs. <laughs> that was a good scam. So how about a ride? What if they search the back and find my bike? It's buried in a pile of concentrated fertilizer powder. <laughs> Trust me, no one's gonna dig through that crap. Now you're gonna ride in the engine compartment. The engine compartment? Hey, I smuggle stuff in there all the time, and most of it's worth more than you. So stuff your carcass in there quick, and we might hit that mink dump by morning. Hope you're better with a stick shift than you are with a knife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Smells like he's got a fuel leak. I love engine fires. Sorry, sir. Only police vehicles be on this point. I'm with the feds, chump. Check it out. Huh? What's this about? Undercover agricultural sting operation. What's in the back? Fertilizer. All right, move along. Hope you rubes get your man. <laughs> hmm, we stopped moving. Problem with your truck? 
Uh, <laughs> loose holes and nothing big. I, I already pulled your bike out. It's sitting right over there. Well, nice knowing you. Gotta hit the road, you know. Uh-oh. He did have a fuel leak, and he took my fuel line to fix it. That trucker's gonna die for what he did. junk and a hose I can use on my bike. I don't think Mo would mind if I borrow him. Mo? She took my booster fuel. Uh, why is she running from me? She must think the whole world's against her. I think I know how that feels. That does it. He's dead. That sign. That means I'm in cave fish territory. This cargo is worthless. We have been tricked, my brothers. Back to the cave. Hmm. The place looks deserted. Maybe the boss was wrong and she ain't coming here. She's coming. We just got here first. That means all we have to do is sit here and wait. That's all of them. Can't be much holding that up now. What a mess. Maybe I'll just take a little.
<laughs> Look at him run. Boss, it was Nestor's fault. Get in quick. I have a plan. We're going to lure the Corley remnant out of hiding with a bike. Boss, she already has a bike. Yes, but this one she worked on with her father. It's an emotional thing. Don't try to understand. Now hurry. On the tour. I haven't seen you since you retired from the Polecats. Hey, Ben. How's my gang doing? Uh, that's a long story. What are you doing out here? Well, retirement's pretty boring, Ben. So I thought I'd come out to the old mine road and look for trouble. You're picking fights? That's what the old mine road's for, son. Father Tork, I need your help. The gang's in jail and the law. Ben, I'm not the leader of the Polecats anymore. You are. Can't you see I'm on permanent vacation? Any fighting tips, Tork? Ah, Ben, who's tougher than you? Nobody, but those rod wheelers are uglier. They're none too bright either. I'm sure you can handle them. What's up with those cavefish, man? Watch out, Ben. They're not out here for sport. They hijack big rigs. It's part of their religion. Don't get in their way. They're blind, cold-hearted killers. How do the cavefish ride if they're blind? Well, they're only blind because they wear those special goggles to shield their sensitive cave-dwelling eyes. Special sensors in the goggles pick up the dots in the road and other large objects and landmarks to help them navigate. <laughs> Kinda trippy, huh? The vultures are quick, and they're nuts. The ones with those boosters are hard to whip. Just remember, Ben, it's not about muscle, it's about timing. You know any way around Poyahoga Gorge? Around it? <laughs> it's miles and miles long, Ben. What's the matter? Don't like bridges? It blew up. Ooh, sorry I missed that. Well, you could jump it, like Ricky Myron, 
cave fish got his ramp in their hideout, you know. Where is the cave fish hideout exactly? Somewhere on this road. The entrance is totally invisible unless you got those weird cave fish specs. Can't talk anymore, Ben. Eating too many bugs. Well, take it easy, Father. Give him hell, Polecat. Say there, is that a pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster you have there? Why, yes it is. Ta-ta! <coughs> You really should get one of these booster deals. Wow, 
Are you really a polecat? Like choppers, huh? How about this? Oh! should have a couple of good boosts left in it. This time you're gonna stay now.
Now, it's a bell, I'm mad.
I'm done with these boys. It's a single hoverlift unit. Looks okay for an aftermarket part. All right, I've modified my bike enough. Souvenirs here. We got your hats. <clears throat> what can I get you? Why all the lights down here? We got a demolition derby tonight. First prize is a vintage curly hardtail, completely restored by the old man himself. Yep. What's this big arena doing way out here? Corley built the Smashatorium so his employees could have some wholesome entertainment nearby. He sure took care of his employees. I got no idea what's gonna happen to us now that he's gone. I'm looking for a good souvenir. Well, good souvenirs is all I got. What can I fix you up with? Something small, furry, and yellow. Sorry, this is the only set of teeth I got. <laughs> <coughs> Dang, there goes another one. How about that little car there? It's small, but it's not cheap, my friend. You better just take it for a test drive to make sure. Actually, let me think about it. He who hesitates goes home with Jack, and his kids hate him. Thanks for the warning. Seen any vultures around here? Nah, we don't have much of a vulture problem here, even though their hideout is right up the road. They stay pretty much locked up in there. Not very social. What's in the hat? I don't know. Came filled with it. Probably some sort of packing material. Packs a punch, I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> Better let you get back to work. All right, matey. We got your pennants. We got it all right here. Official Corley Motors merchandise. <clears throat> Drive your own derby car by remote control. Our bunnies come with batteries included. Lovable, lovable little bunnies. The officially licensed bunny of the Corley Motors Smashatorium. We got your t-shirts here. All sizes and colors. Fill our handy beverage hats with your drink of choice. You'll be keeping cold and looking bold. Uh, you, big fella, come give our derby car a spin. Souvenirs to remind you of your special Smashatorium adventure. Buy your kids a bunny so they'll shut up on the long drive home. Don't be a cheap jerk. Buy something. <coughs> if we don't got it, then it stinks. <laughs> Pat the bunny. You know you want to. You just can't get this stuff anywhere else, folks. And it's cheap, too.
There's the Vulture's hideout, on the other side of this field. I've heard a lot about the Vultures. And I guess it's all true. Those weapons were at a weight. I'm practically giving this loot away. What's a couple of bucks in exchange for a timeless memento? These that should put some life into it. Sure, sure. Take it for a spin. Just don't go out of range. Don't crowd everybody. There's enough for everyone. Hey, don't go in there. Now look what you did. The entrance is all the way through the factory. Hang on, little buddy. Daddy's coming. Now it's just me and the bunnies. Field's been replanted. Tidy little vultures. Dang, there goes another value pack.
That's the guy I was telling you about, Susie. You sure? Yeah. That's the guy who killed my father. All right, vultures! Rack him up! Let's rip him quick. Listen, Mo. You're making a big mistake. Oh, Ben, you're right. We shouldn't do this quickly. We should draw this out, don't you think, Susie? Hey, I got all night. You heard her, kids. Let's draw this out. <clears throat> Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll call you names. <laughs> like what? Diaper Dynamo. How? How'd you hear that name? Your father. He told me just before he died. You bludgeoned my father and then talked about old times? I didn't kill him. Rip Berger did. A photographer took pictures, but her camera was stolen by the same thug that came after you. I... I still have that role. Well, develop it, would you? While I still fit in my clothes? Okay, you stay here. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, don't sweat it. I'm gonna get Rip Burger even if I die trying. No, we have to expose Rip Burger at the shareholders' meeting. That way, we take him down, we save my gang, and your father gets his dying wish. You take over Corley Motors. Rip Burger canceled the shareholders' meeting. He made a statement to the press that there'd be no meeting until the murderers were brought to justice. So. No shareholders meeting until we're both dead? Hmm. That could be arranged. Okay, so here we go. Faking Ben and Maureen's death. Act one, scene one. Adrian Ripburger, in a desperate attempt to lure our Maureen out of hiding, has developed the following lame-ass scheme. First prize at tonight's smash-up derby is a vintage hard tail that Mo restored with her dad. Rip hopes Mo will try to nab said bike on account of her sentimental attachment to it. So Ben and Mo play along, put on disguises, and enter the demolition derby, which ends tragically when their cars explode and both are presumed dead. Uh, question. Please save your questions until the end. Now, the explosives in Mo's car can only be triggered by a head-on collision with Ben's car. This ejector seat projects Mo clear of the explosion, and she parachutes to safety. Don't you think someone will notice her ejecting out of her car? No. They'll all be watching you running around on fire. Yeah, that's another question I have. When your car explodes, you climb from it in flames and run around the stadium distracting the audience. In your cute little asbestos suit, of course. <laughs> that's some plan. All right, then. Let's go blow you little darlings up! All right, folks. Hang on to your chili dogs, cause it's time to start. The Corley Motors Smashatorium Amateur Driver Ultimate Destruction Maximum Carnage Marathon. Let's meet our crash cage gladiators. That mysterious looking hooded figure wouldn't give us his real name. He prefers to be known as the Unknown Avenger. And that's just fine with us, isn't it, folks? Oh, now I'm just embarrassed for them. Who do they think they're fooling with those ludicrous disguises? And next to him is another masked newcomer. Please give a big smashatorium salute to the princess of pile-up, Doreen Schmorley! boys. Sick em. And finally, we have a last minute addition to the lineup tonight. A deadly looking team known as the Boom Boom Brothers. Mm. Try and get away now, bicycle boy. All right now, are you ready to see some reckless driving? Are you ready to see some unnecessarily violent destruction? Then let the Demolition Derby begin! Are you Ben? Hang on, Mo. Here I come. Guard. 
I stalled when I bounced off the roof. Looks like these babies have a glass jaw. Ben, what are you doing? Get over here and nail me! Okay, Boom Boom Brothers, it's all over. Get him! What are you doing? Are you taking a nap? <sighs> Idiots. Okay, Mo. Time for our big finale. Do it! Man, quit clowning around and make a diversion. I am a diversion. No offense, but we need a bigger one. The bike is guarded. Who cares about the bike? Mo says it's important, so we're not leaving without it. All right, I'll see what I can do, but I'm burning at both ends here. Oh, you... Well, folks, it looks like the party's getting a little out of hand. The stadium seems to be catching fire, but let's all remain calm and... Yeah, you're right. The derby's over. Run for your lives! Finally. Now, squish that firefly while he's hot. <laughs> Look at him run. Did you get him? We finally got him, Bolas. That means Ripburger has to make us vice presidents now, like he promised. And give us 10,000 shares of stock each. Hmm. Funny smell. What's that? The temperature light? Well, on the bright side, I just made 20,000 shares of stock. Time to start the shareholders' meeting. Where's the hardtail? All over the floor, Mr. Avenger. What? What happened to your deep, sentimental attachment to your father's vintage bike? Ben, it's just a bike. I can put it back together in about a half an hour. But that's assuming, of course, I can find that key. What key are you talking about? Key to my dad's safe. I remember he hid it somewhere on this bike. 
but I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything that even looks like a key. What's in the safe that's so important? My dad's will. I'm counting on him to tell the truth about me, finally. Why did he keep you a secret all these years? He didn't want people to find out about my mom. What's so bad about Mrs. Corley? She wasn't my mom. Huh. But how are we going to get in the factory? In the back of the factory, there's a secret entrance that leads straight into Dad's office. He used to sneak me in so I could help him with his bike designs. When he got too old to do all the work himself? Nah, this is back when I was six. Hmm. How do I find the secret passage? Well, it's tricky. You have to wait for all the utility meters to turn black. Then you kick the wall in just the right spot and you're in. How do I find the right spot to kick? Dad just knew exactly where to kick it. But I remember that there was this big crack in the wall. And if I lined up that crack with my eye level and kicked the wall right in front of me, this weird portal would open up. Hmm. What if I can't find that spot? Just line up your eyes with the crack, wait for the meters to go black, and kick. How was your flight? Well, there were some explosions during takeoff and I landed in a minefield. But other than that, it was fine. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Great, now help me find that key. What are we in, anyway? It's a C-330 Big Mouth Industrial Cargo Jumbo Transport we fixed up. We want to get it rolling so we can take it to biker rallies. You're going to try to fly this thing? Rolling, Ben. Rolling. Uh, this baby's flying days are over, just like mine. Remember that time you tried to kill me? Yeah, we really taught you a lesson. <laughs> get it? I'll see what I can do. Right. I'm not putting my lips on that. Hmm. Here, take the photos. I don't want them. Show them to someone important if you get a chance. There's, uh, some sort of card. A tape. I sure hope that's Corley's will. Cool. <laughs> Looks like the meeting started was not only an inspirational leader, but also a great personal friend. His loss affects us all deeply. Malcolm and I spoke often of the future. We talked of a day when Corley Motors would move beyond its humble beginnings into a new vehicular age. And although his tragic death took him from us sooner than anyone expected, Malcolm Corley's dream remains. And I shall carry out that dream in his memory. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you the future of Corley Motors. The Corley Minivan. <laughs> Ah, Corley was right. I never dreamed it would actually come to minivans, though.
What you see before you right now is my vision for Oh, perfect. This is a disaster. You're telling me. We're gonna have some major downtime here. Why don't you tell a joke or something? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know any jokes. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of an amusing anecdote. <laughs> About her. Uh, uh, I... Well, I'm out of ideas. No, I'm not really sure of that. Triple E's having a huge word. No, but. Now, this next slide shows our new, more aggressive corporate strategy. <laughs> Hello there. If you're hearing this, I must have croaked. Well, people gotta move on, you know, and make room for other people. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. I've made room for someone else to take my place at Corley Motors. And it ain't that embezzling crook, Adrian Ripburn. Rip, you don't belong at the head of my company. You belong in jail. Uh... I let that man talk me into far too many things. Like keeping my daughter a secret. He was wrong. I was wrong. I should have stood by her. I hope, Maureen, that you forgive me and that you take over Corley Motors and run it however you see fit. All right, that's enough. How do I turn this damn thing off? I... Uh, I'm sorry you had to hear that tape from... one of Malcolm's psychiatric sessions. And near the end, he, he suffered many paranoid delusions. He was haunted by powerful forces of his own creation. And here's one of them. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maureen Corley, and do I have a heck of a story for you. By the time I'm done, you'll see why this man should be in jail. Hey! Where'd he hobble off to? Uh-oh. There he goes. And then he sent his goons after me. Run, Rip Burger. When it's time to find you, we'll just follow the shiny trail. Yes, of course we'll have daycare facilities. Any other questions? Oh, speak of the devil. Come over here, Ben. That is great, Ben. Find where we were meant to be all along. So, after we pick up your bike, we'll go get my gang out of jail. And then find out why my gang never showed up to help us. And then you go business suit shopping. Don't remind me. Don't complain. You're going to be rich. At this point, I'd settle for just a little peace and quiet. She interrupted my speech, Ben. She really shouldn't have. I was just about to talk about the inherent dangers of motorcycle operation. Huh? What? Can't you make this damn thing go any faster?
my cane! You'll need more than a cane when I'm through with you, Rip Burger. One sneaks up on me from behind. I said it couldn't fly. I never said it couldn't taxi. Well, flying would be nice since we're headed for the gorge. Ripperger, you're going to kill all of us. Shh, Ben. Don't ruin the ending. How do you stop this thing? From the cockpit! Hmm. Ah! Careful, Ben! So much for the controls. I could have used those. Here goes nothing. What did you do? <laughs> ben, Ben, are you alive? I am, but I don't know about Rip Burger. I can see him. He's out cold. Climb back here quick. then. Nothing to hold on to over there. Wait, come back! We need your weight in the plane! Try that again. Ben, Ben, climb back here quick. Wait, come back! We need your weight in the plane!
Life was a game to him, and he played it by his own rules. He was a mystery to most of us, and yet an inspiration to us all. He gave us freedom. He gave us power. He gave us wings. He gave us wheels. Thank you, Malcolm Corley, for giving us a dream that will never die. So... So... Uh, maybe we could do lunch sometime next week. Yeah, sure. Lunch sounds great. Things aren't gonna change, are they, Ben? I mean, just because I'm in charge of the company now, and living in a mansion, and riding around in limos, that doesn't mean we won't spend a lot of time together, does it? Look, Mo, you're in a different league now. You shouldn't be hanging out with the likes of me anymore. But, Ben... Oh, just a second. Hello? What? No, 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 that's crazy. Is he nuts? Look, move the meeting up to five and tell the plant foreman that I'm coming over personally to inspect those parts. I know, I know, that's what I told him. <sighs> Excuse me, what was that last part? No, 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 that alloy was flawed to begin with. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 good, great.
Population is greatly decreased, and now the odds are greatly increased that I may someday get a chance to kiss your lips. I thank the Lord each day for the apocalypse. Bye. <laughs> 